Welcome to the Rotobrush Headquarters and Training Center. My name's Pat Hyland. This video is designed to give you a quick start for your Rotobrush air duct cleaning service. You'll learn some great tips and techniques that will help you with all aspects of cleaning your customer's air ducts. This video is organized into chapters, but we recommend you first watch it in its entirety, and then you can refer back to individual chapters as needed. Once you gain some hands-on experience with the equipment, we invite you to come to our Certified Air Duct Training Center. Here you can learn ways to expand your cleaning skills as well as effective ways to grow your business. Okay, the first chapter deals with unpacking the Rotobrush equipment and identifying the individual components. So let's take a look. This chapter is designed to orient you to the Rotobrush equipment and accessories. Depending upon which package you purchased, some of these items may not be included. Accessory box B is your brush box and contains all your brushes, with the exception of the single 8-inch brush that is attached to the Rotobrush hose on the machine. There are both soft and stiff bristle brushes. Soft brushes are used for all types of ductwork including flex duct, ductboard, and sheet metal ducts. The stiff bristle brushes are only to be used on sheet metal ductwork because they are too aggressive for flex duct or fiberboard ducts. The brush size is written on the bottom of each brush hub, with the exception of the small 8-inch brush. You will use the 8-inch brush to clean the majority of smaller supply air ducts. For larger duct work, use a brush 2 to 4 inches larger than the height of the duct. When cleaning rectangular ducts, use a brush 4 inches larger than the height of the duct. For example, in a 10-inch high rectangular duct, use a 14-inch brush. Your owner's manual provides additional tips on brush sizes and cleaning techniques. Here's how to change the brush. Walk around the hose to the button at the base of the brush. Avoid rotating the brush to access the brush button because the added torque will make the brush button more difficult to depress. Press the button with a ballpoint pen or a small screwdriver and take off the brush. To attach a brush, position the brush hub at an angle to the nozzle assembly. Depress the brush button and slide the brush down until the button snaps flush with the cable. The marketing package box contains postcards, door hangers, and brochures. The marketing instructional book provides ideas and techniques to help build your business. There's also a marketing presentation DVD and a CD that contains digital resources for creating your own marketing pieces. There are also multiple copies of the consumer marketing DVD that you can show to prospective customers interested in your air duct cleaning services. Accessory box A contains the 35 foot long, one and a half inch complete hose assembly, red accessory bag, oxine fogging chemical, and finally, if purchased, the dryer vent assembly. When cleaning smaller supply ducts, wall stacks, and four inch bathroom ducts, use the one and a half inch hose assembly. A larger two and a quarter inch hose assembly is attached to the machine during shipping and should be used whenever possible to provide maximum airflow and vacuum power. The red accessory bag contains the following. The six inch cable extension helps you navigate around tight corners when used with the eight inch brush and smaller hose assemblies. This extension can also be used with the two and a quarter inch hose assembly to allow the nozzle to rest on the bottom of the air duct and more efficiently collect heavier debris. To remove the brush from the cable extension, a long thin screwdriver should be used at the brush end. You'll also find extra pre-filter bags used to collect debris and protect the HEPA filters. The nozzle adapter transforms the roto brush into a HEPA shop vac. After the brush is removed, attach the nozzle adapter so that the vacuum accessories can be used. On the smaller one and one half inch hose, you'll use the nozzle bushing for proper attachment. Note that the hose assembly includes a cable retainer that prevents the cable from sliding back into the hose when not in use. Always remove this retainer prior to attaching the hose to the machine. You'll also find a box of oxine sanitizer. Oxine is an EPA registered product used in treating hard surface ductwork after cleaning. Oxine will be discussed later in its own chapter on this DVD. If purchased, the dryer vent hose assembly will ship in box A. The dryer vent hose can be attached to either of the larger hose assemblies. If used on the smaller hose, use the bushing from the nozzle adapter to ensure a tight fit. Next is the main rotobrush box. Carefully cut out the side of the box at the corners to access the machine. 
Note that the rotor brush handle needs to be installed on the carrier before removal. Squeeze the spring-loaded handle pins together to release the locking mechanism. The power and control cords for the machine, as well as the owner's manual, are located in the carrier storage compartment. The low voltage controller is used to turn the vacuums on and off as well as to control the direction of the brush. The Rotor Brush Air Plus consists of two main components, the black carrier and the red power pod. The two components will be used together for the majority of cleaning. However, in tight spaces such as small bedrooms, attics, or crawl spaces, the power pod can be removed from the carrier and used separately. To remove the power pod, Pull the slide lock located at the rear door and rotate clockwise. The pin will lock in the out position. Simply lift the pod by the top handle to remove it from the carrier and steady it using your other hand and the front handle. The slide lock needs to remain in the out position for the pod to be reinserted into the carrier. Once the pod has been reinstalled into the carrier, re-engage the slide lock. The carrier has large rear wheels for ease in moving up and down stairs, and the front wheels are locking casters to fix the machine's position during cleaning and transport. Beneath the hinge top cover of the power pod are the machine's filters. The pre-filter bag is specifically designed to capture the larger dirt and debris from the air ducts and extend the life of the HEPA filters. Pre-filter bags should be changed when about half full. The Rotobrush Air Plus has two installed HEPA filters. When cleaning these filters, vacuum the outside with a shop vac and then blow them from the inside out with compressed air. Never clean any of the filters with water. The lid of the Air Plus is magnetically secured and is then further secured with negative pressure once the vacuums are enabled. Accessory Package C contains the fogger, two cases of Envirocon, and the Rotovision. Both the process of fogging using the Envirocon and the use of the Rotovision camera will be discussed in their own chapters later on this DVD. Lastly is the IC cam, primarily used by HVAC contractors to inspect furnaces and other small spaces. The soft nylon case has pockets to store the accessories and flaps to access controls. In addition to the flexible inspection rods, there is an articulated rod stored in the back pocket of the case, along with the camera and a battery charger. All the rods are attached by screwing into the back of the camera. In the side pocket is 15 feet of camera cord. The battery is located in the pocket behind the four inch LCD monitor. There's also a cigarette lighter charger included for a mobile alternative to recharging the battery. Once fully charged, the IC cam will operate for up to eight hours. Now let's talk about the vehicles that you're going to transport the equipment on as well as the accessories that are needed to accomplish the duct cleaning job and to help us today we're going to have Scott Peterson who's an air system cleaning specialist with NACA as well as a certified indoor environmentalist. So uh, Scott, thanks for helping us today. Absolutely. Uh, first thing I want to talk about is first the vehicles that you can transport the rotor brush and the accessories on. The one we have today is a little oversized for what you typically need. Okay, so this van, you know, is bigger. Uh, you don't necessarily need this. Uh, you, what, what can you use? You can use station wagons, small SUVs to, yep. uh, small to regular truck. service vans. Absolutely. Okay. Yep. Okay. Well, let's talk about all the different components that we've got here and why they're packaged the way they are. Okay, well, let's start with the rotor brush. The rotor brush, this handle here, it can be raised for going up and down stairs. And uh, so this is in its resting position. Uh, this also can be removed, so it'll actually roll into the back of a station wagon or even into a, a deep bed pickup truck like an avalanche. Now when you say roll, there's locking mechanisms on it too, right? Yes, there's okay. locking casters on the front. So, okay. Uh, um, you also may want to, if, if you are looking at some really rough roads, go ahead and tie it to the side of the machine as well. Okay. But uh, that makes typically sense. The, the casters will be fine, okay. the locking casters. Also we have a, a crate here with chemicals and paints uh, that we'll get into a little bit later today. Okay. And, uh, but it gives you nice visibility to get, do a quick inventory for what you're going to be doing. Okay. Using. So your chemicals and spray paints and degreasers and stuff. Yeah, and that's actually what you use the sprayer for is your degreaser to be able to, to spray your registers. Okay. Okay. And uh, then we also have the video inspection system back there. And uh, along with your shop back package okay. that has all the components, your nozzle adapters, your cable extensions and the like. Okay. Okay. Then the most important tool not to forget, because if you forget it, you're not going to be able to complete much of your job.